Andre Novikov is the creator and founder of Owner Console. You may have heard some buzz around it on Facebook groups and thought you might all want to learn a little bit more about the product. Uh, before we dive in, I want to make sure I address that this is available in both the U.S. and Canada for Canadians who are de determining whether or not to watch this whole video. So yes, available in U.S. and Canada. And Andre is actually located in Toronto, Canada, so it originated there. Um, Andre, thanks for joining today. Before we dive into the details of what Owner Consult is, can you share what inspired you to create the product? Absolutely. When I first uh, started in real estate, I had uh, a mentor of mine that uh, uh, kept coming to me because I have a math degree. And he was asking me to create these uh, really long CMA reports um, that he would then use to take to the seller agents and convince them of the price of a property, despite you know the elevated prices that the seller wanted to uh, uh, to sell the property. So he kept coming to me, you know, it's really hard to come up with 20 page reports every single time. I said, Hey, is there a better way, a quicker way of doing it? Started building some automation, started uh, improving the process. And I said, you know what, it'd probably be a good idea to do this as a service um, for agents that want to stay top of mind with their past clients uh, with something that uh, clients actually want to see, and that's the value of their home. So that's how the uh, idea originated in Canada. We started servicing um, all the cities uh, in Canada, and obviously in U.S., we've had uh, uh, tools like HomeBot was uh, very popular at the time. Um, that already existed, but the integration wasn't... Uh, that's great for follow-up boss. Uh, so we took that Canadian product, we upgraded it with the latest technology, we created an integration with follow-up boss, um, and now we also released it for uh, for the US. So that's kind of the quick, quick story of how Owner Console came to be. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Well, I know that you uh, prepared a slideshow, so I'd love if you can explain what Owner Console is and the main features of um, how it helps benefit real estate agents. Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, get started here. I called my presentation Finding Gold in Your Follow Boss Database. The idea here is that a lot of um, agents focus on the buy side or on the buyer leads. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It's uh, really easy to buy those leads. They're pretty cheap. There's a lot of uh, different uh, lead sources. And um, generally speaking, it feels like um, you're doing work because a lot of these leads, they want to see a, a property, you take them on a showing, and it feels like things are working and um, you know something is happening. But what you then soon realize is that on average, you end up spending four to five times more um, uh, time and just work on buyer leads than mm -hmm. seller leads. And then, for example, if a deal falls through, you end up, you know, creating um, an offer, presenting it. If it doesn't get accepted, you got to start that whole process over again, right? You don't have to do that with a listing. If, you know, a deal falls through, well, you just wait for the next one to, uh, to come in. So you can actually scale your business a lot more. Um, and the difference between working with 10 buyers versus 10 sellers is huge. 10 mm -hmm. buyers, you have no time to do anything. Uh, 10 sellers, you can easily manage that and um, and still uh, probably have more time to, uh, you know, look for other clients. Yeah. And before you keep going, one question I forgot to ask, um, something that you mentioned just a little while ago was about past clients. Are people using owner console only for past clients or also for seller leads that you haven't reached or um, seller leads are nurturing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and the answer is it kind of depends where you are geographically. In Canada, so many agents rely on their sphere uh, that generally speaking in Canada, you would be sending this report only to your past clients. Um, and if you have 300 of your past clients, that's actually enough to just get that wheel going because there's going to be people selling every year. Um, and that should give you enough business as long as 
those clients remember that you're their agents, that you're the expert in their property, um, and they're going to come back to you when the right time uh, comes. You just need to remind them that you're the one. Um, in U.S., it's very different because we do tend to get um, um, most of um, our business through new leads. Um, so, for example, this uh, would be, you know, let's say you're working with uh, Zillow Flex or Zillow Premier Agent. You're getting those seller leads uh, into your follow-up boss. Um, one of the things that you should be doing is automatically putting them onto uh, a system that sends out uh, automated uh, home valuations because a lot of times people start um, kind of looking around before they need to sell. Uh, so there's going to be that uh, time where uh, those leads need to sit in your database, um, mature and uh, get ready to move. Um, you just need to make sure that you can spot those uh, critical times and get in front of them by either calling them, texting them, or somehow engaging with them to um, make sure that you are the agent that they end up working with. So it can be done with both, um, but there is quite a bit of a difference between U.S. and Canada and how um, these systems are usually being used. Awesome. Well, let's dive into it. All right. Uh, first of all, a little bit about me. This is one thing that um, I realized not a lot of people make the connection. Um, I'm the founder of Texting Betty, which um, a lot of uh, the viewers might be uh, already using or at least heard about. And uh, now we're also um, releasing the new products, uh, Owner Console. Um, so both are under the same company. Um, both of them are run by me. So let's uh, take a look at um, a quick example of what an average follow bus database might look like and uh, do some quick math. As I said, I'm a math guy, so numbers are kind of my thing. So um, on average, um, this is just looking at um, our clients, um, you would have about 10,000 uh, contacts in your database. We also found that about 30% of those contacts will have addresses um, attached to their profiles. Let's take a conservative view and let's just say that not everybody is gonna be a homeowner um, out of those uh, 3,000 contacts. Let's just say 50 are, 50%. 50 so that leaves us with uh, 1,500. And then the industry average is that 5% of homeowners will move every year. So that uh, equates to 75 deals in your database that you don't have to buy that are ready in your database with that information. All you have to do is get in front of them and make sure that they choose you um, as their agent. So there are two things I want to point out. One's a question and one's a statement. Um, so if you go back to the previous slide you're just showing, you showed that like 50, the 30% of people have addresses. Why would only 50% of them be actual homeowners with addresses? So depending how you're getting your uh, leads and how you're building your database, they could be renters. Um, sometimes uh, some of the systems fill in addresses for uh, property inquiries. Um, it really just depends on how that information gets ingested into follow up boss. Um, generally speaking, some are going to be uh, renters and they don't actually own that property, um, but um, others will be, right? It just really depends what, uh, what the source is. Uh, we say, let's assume that 50% is. And uh, in your database, you can easily look at how many um, non-renters there are because the renters are usually going to be tagged with renter tag. Um, so you can filter those out and actually see how many uh, clients with addresses that are not renters you have and kind of get a good idea of uh, what your specific database looks like. But here, we're just looking at some averages um, across kind of all our clients. Okay. And then the statement I wanted to make was this tool, which unfortunately is not available in Canada, uh, very well would help with owner console. You may already have a ton of buyers in your database and you don't know who is a homeowner in there. Um, so people in the U.S., you can use a tool called Smart Alto that is very accurate at finding um, addresses. And not only that, but finding out data about uh, the property like how long they've lived in the property, um, the age of the people, 
And uh, then you can uh, push those people that you find that were sellers hiding in your database over to owner console. So for those watching, if you didn't catch the interview I did with Smart Alto, I'll put a link to that in the description. Absolutely. If all of a sudden you find that this part is too low, you have a very low percentage of uh, clients uh, with addresses or that have verified uh, ownership, uh, Smart Alto is a great tool to go through your database um, and augment it with the missing data. Um, and then you can move on kind of to the next step of how to actually engage with those clients and how to make sure that they know that you're in business of selling real estate so that you can actually close those 75 deals that, uh, that are hiding in your database. All right, so let's uh, let's answer that question. You know, how do you get seventy five homeowners to pick you? Well, the first step is you need to connect with those three thousand people that are then going to funnel down to the seventy five, and you need to do two things. You need to let them know that you're a real estate agent. That's pretty simple. Uh, they need to know that you specialize in their area, and that you're an expert in their property. And the way you do that is uh, through the use of uh, seller tools. Uh, so uh, we mentioned um, HomeBot, uh, Fellow is a newcomer, and now Owner Console is another solution that, uh, that you can use. Um, and I have a very kind of interesting um, uh, story about this. So I'll get into it. Uh, so number two thing is that you need to reach out uh, to um, all these clients um, whenever they show interest in the value of their property. Uh, sometimes they will reach out to you, but a lot of times um, if they don't have a personal relationship with you, uh, you need to make sure you get in front of them by either calling them, texting them and saying, hey, it looks like um, uh, you were interested in your value of your home. Maybe you've made some adjustments uh, to the value. Um, what's going on? Tell me Tell me what your plans are. And that's a really kind of powerful way to get in front of someone that might be considering uh, making a move. Now, the story that um, I mentioned uh, when I was first designing um, Owner Console and uh, we were uh, making sure that valuations look good and um, you know the system works, I got a few of my friends that go to uh, my gym um, on the valuations and uh, it's been kind of running for a couple of months. And uh, within three or so months, I had several people pull me aside and they're like, hey, I got my valuation report this morning. Did you see what the value is? What, what are your thoughts? And I'm like, I have no idea what the valuation is because it's all automated. Um, and I'm not really in the business of selling homes, uh, but I'm really excited for you, whatever the value is. Um, and I found it really kind of endearing and it you know, really showed that this actually does work. Um, and the fact that you don't have to put any uh, you know, amount of time after the initial setup um, is, uh, is a great indicator that um, this is the reason why you would do it, is so that people can come back to you, talk about real estate, uh, and really engage not just about um, the real estate market, but specifically about uh, their property. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, I mentioned, um, um, owner console as uh, the new system. What does it do? Um, it nurtures your seller clients by sending out automated monthly home evaluation reports um, with up-to-date info, and it does it through follow-up boss. So um, a lot of uh, systems, um, in contrast, um, they will uh, send it through their system. You're not in control of that communication. So there's three things that um, uh, Owner Console uh, differs from uh, some of the competitors. Um, well, really four. One, it works in Canada and US. That's uh, a key thing that you mentioned at the beginning. Uh, we're fully integrated into Follow Up Boss. You control the communication that goes out. And you can also benefit from um, ranking higher on Google by embedding the reports onto your website. So let me break this uh, down for you really quick. So full integration to follow bus, what does this mean? We got an app 
You don't need to log into it as long as you're logged into Follow Boss. You don't need to upload your database anywhere else because it's already in Follow Boss. Uh, you can manage everything that you need to know from Follow Boss. There's no extra website. In fact, there's you can't even log in anywhere else. Everything is stored into your Follow Boss um, one place um, for everything. I love that. That's You've had that um, mentality since you started your first business, te Texting Betty. There's no place you can log into for Texting Betty. You just manage it through Follow Boss, making it all as simple as possible. Yeah. And the reason for that is uh, there's already so many tools that uh, real estate agents need to uh, use and know how to use. There's so many logins that you have to store. So the less of that you have to do, uh, the more effective and uh, more um, time you're going to have on focusing and actually driving your business rather than doing kind of the operational tasks. I mentioned that uh, you control the communication uh, with the uh, owner console. The reason for that is because we utilize the uh, systems already inside follow bus. So when you send an email, it goes through the connected email in your follow bus. So you can, when someone replies, they reply directly to you. They're not replying uh, to like another service. Emails are going directly from you. So it looks like as if you put in the time to create it rather than, oh, I signed you up for like a third party um, uh, mm -hmm. service, right? So it kind of, it brings your value as an agent up um, because it think, like you, it looks like you've done the work. You can change these templates. So uh, if you want to customize it, if you want to say something else, you want to add some pictures, you want to add your signature, you can do all of that because as I said, it's just an email that goes out uh, from an action plan inside Follow -up Boss. You have full control over it. We give you the default um, that works really well, but you're free to customize that as you wish. And on top of that, uh, when you're sending the link, we can actually brand the link to your website. So, um, you know, instead of saying ownerconsole.com, uh, you can have your domain name show up in that link. That brings uh, a lot of brand awareness. It's, um, uh, again, shows that you're the one that's uh, doing the work for, uh, for the client and uh, it's just a third party. So for the website, would it be a web page like um, andrenovikov.com slash owner console or whatever that slug is? Exactly. So um, when we embed the website, uh, so this is essentially what I'm referring to. So when you send that link out, that link can point to a page on your website, but it's only accessible through that link and it would only show um, the information for that specific client because the link is encrypted and it has all the information in the link. So the only way to actually see the data is to for the client to click on that link. Now, when they do click on that link, they're redirected to your website where our uh, owner console widget will load up. But from Google's perspective, that's a visit to your website. It's not a visit to a third party website. It's a visit to your website. So remember when we were talking about sending this to 3,000 of your contacts, that's 3,000 of potential visits to your website monthly because we've this updates monthly, that's recurring visitor base. The more traffic, the higher Google ranking, the more deals you're gonna do because people are going to find you a lot easier um, and you're gonna show up in all those local rankings uh, when they search for an agent. So how are you using like specific keywords in order to improve the Google ranking? So your website is probably already optimized somewhat for the SEO. This piece adds the organic traffic that's coming to your website. So that's, what, that's one piece that Google looks at. It's not necessarily related to the, uh, to the keywords. It's just the traffic hitting your website on monthly basis. And essentially the way Google looks at it, it says, okay, uh, there's a lot of people coming to your website. That means that you have some good content. I'm gonna promote your website higher in the rankings because of that um, traffic. So kind of traffic, builds more traffic. 
Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, some follow-up questions for you. You may be going over this later. If so, just let me know. But how does someone add a lead to owner console? Does it require them setting up some sort of automation and follow boss to tag the leads or um, yeah, how, how do you add someone to owner console? Yeah, so there's uh, two ways to do that. Uh, you can either do it one by one where um, you go into each profile of the leads, um, you click on create report um, and it will generate the link um, and you can take a look at what the valuation is. You can make adjustments to it, um, or you can do it in batch. Um, the batch works through uh, tags. So what you will have to do is uh, select all the clients that have addresses and add the owner console tag, and that will automatically kick off the process to generate the reports. Uh, once that's done, you can uh, then start action plans to actually send it out. Um, our app is designed to make it super easy. So let me just kind of go back to where the, the screenshot is. Uh, once you're created the report, you can view it uh, by clicking on this button. Um, you can also, right from the app, start the action plans. So here we have the email action plan. So when you're done, you're good to send it out. All you have to do is click on that. You don't need to look for the correct um, action plan. It uses an action plan. You can actually customize it too. if. Um, you want to use a different action plan. It's almost kind of like just like a shortcut to start um, an owner console action plan. The neat thing is that you can also send this uh, through a text message. Um, for that, you would need to, to have a texting integration like Texting Betty. But if you do have Texting Betty ready, um, it's so, so powerful to send uh, these uh, valuation reports through a text message. Um, it's... Um, the results are way, way better than just uh, just emails. We usually uh, recommend launching both, um, and um, that's how you maximize the viewership. Yeah, for us personally, not with this specifically, but just any action plan we use for our clients, we see an on average an at least a 20% increase in response rate when you do both email and text. And I would assume it would apply here because people look at their text messages more often than email. So that would increase, maybe not necessarily the reply rate, but the click rate, click through rate of going to your, your website and viewing it. Do Absolutely. you have, do you have any future plans to push leads over to owner console without requiring a tag, like just detecting when someone has an address and pushing them over? So we try to keep the user in mind um, so that uh, you kind of have full control over how you want to create these uh, reports. Um, I think what you're kind of asking is, can that be completely automated without having to put tags on? Um, absolutely. We have clients that are doing this when there is a source, um, the lead comes in to follow a boss. It works really well with Zillow Flex. You have a seller lead coming from Zillow Flex. Uh, it goes through the check where it says, okay, we do have an address for them. Um, and then it kicks off an action plan uh, where uh, you would have like the initial steps where you try to send them a text message, you try to call them. Um, on day three, it sends them a valuation report automatically. So for everyone that comes in, um, you can set it up so that you don't have to tag anything. If you do have those leads coming in with addresses, it will just uh, automatically uh, fire off a valuation on whatever day that you choose. Um, usually it's probably not gonna be the first day, but um, mm. uh, you can start it up on the third day. And it's a really nice way to kind of re-engage with that lead if you haven't uh, been able to get a hold of them um, with those uh, few phone calls or text messages. Yeah, I know I'm getting into the weeds here, but I'm guessing people probably have a similar question. What about manually enter leads? Yeah, so um, again, every lead will have this um, in their profile. Uh, so you can uh, manually create uh, the leads. Uh, again, you have to have some sort of a trigger. Uh, so whether you do it manually or say like you have manual leads that are already in your database, all you have to do is mass tag them with owner console and then we'll actually produce uh, the report. And then you can do the same thing to actually start the action plan 
uh, you would mass tag them with a specific um, uh, tag that mentions the uh, action plan that you want to start, and it will automatically start that action plan on uh, you know a number of uh, clients. So you do have to have uh, owner console integration uh, to kind of use that, um, and there are some limitations so that uh, it doesn't. Uh, blow up uh, any follow up bus servers um, mm -hmm. uh, so but uh, uh, there is ways to to automate this um, I don't want to go through too many details they're they're somewhat technical but yeah the question is the answer is uh, yeah you can uh, there's ways to to make it simple and uh, and easy so you don't have to do it manually and speaking of like more technical that we can go more technical details than we can go through on this video, what does support look like when someone signs up for owner console? Do does do you or a team member work with the agent to figure out how they want to push their seller leads over to owner console? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, the initial setup is super simple. You don't need us to um, actually set you up uh, that could be done um, anyone can do it uh, in fact we don't uh, require credit cards uh, uh, as you can try it out uh, for free um, i'll show you i'll explain how to do that later um, if there is something that's more uh, in depth and you do want to kind of figure out how to connect uh, your uh, lead sources to uh, to owner console and make that work without you know a human in uh, in the loop. Uh, our team can definitely hop on a Zoom, uh, walk you through that, or send you extra material. Um, we're pretty keen about um, our support, um, and you might know that from uh, from texting Betty. Um, it's you know the same uh, same focus on uh, uh, client care and support as uh, texting Betty. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll definitely. Uh, be able to advise you on how to set up the system the best and how to customize it for your particular business. Yeah. Props to Anna, by the way. I don't know how she does it all, but <laughs> we're constantly asking her questions and clients, our clients are constantly asking her questions and somehow she manages it all. So um, yeah, if if you talk to her today, let her know that we really appreciate her. Um, Definitely. I have two more questions before you continue. Um, the first one is, does the integration with follow up boss with owner console do anything when someone does view the report? Absolutely. So as soon as someone opens the report, uh, there is a tag that gets pushed to that lead um, and it will say owner console report viewed. Um, okay. Also, when someone makes an adjustment, uh, a tag of owner console adjustment made will get pushed. Um, and those can be used to uh, trigger behavior uh, follow-ups. So you see that someone has engaged with the report, you can send them a follow-up text message where you can uh, schedule uh, a task to uh, to give them a call to talk about uh, the valuation report because you know for a fact, not that they've seen the email, that they actually clicked on the link and loaded the report. That's what uh, the big difference is. Uh, we actually know that when you see that tag, they've opened up the report and they've seen it. Uh, so that's uh, that's super powerful. So you're not uh, calling someone that um, hasn't engaged with it or just maybe opened the, uh, the email. They've seen the evaluation. They've, they've looked at it. Um, it's a much better conversation if they actually made um, adjustments. So the users can make their own adjustments. The agents can make adjustments to the value, but the users can also do that uh, themselves. When you see something like that, um, it's a really good opportunity for you to reach out to them and make that personal connection, ask them about you know, maybe the renovations that they might have done. Um, and all of that information is going to be inside follow up boss. And we also have a report that shows you um, all the clients that are the most active. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, that's the, the biggest indicator that someone might be looking to sell. If they've looked at the report, you know, five or more times within uh, the last week, they they're looking, they're looking at their value, they're 
interested, they might be sending it to their spouse or their family, whoever is making the decision. Um, that is the perfect time to get in front of them because the next step for them is to look for the agent that will sell their home. And if you can get there first and lock it down, they don't have to look at anyone else, right? And they already know you. They already know you as an expert in their property because you've been sending the NAM report. Um, it's um, it's like kind of like a cheat code of uh, getting in front of uh, sellers before uh, they're, um, you know, starting to look for uh, for agents and putting you in competition with uh, with other people. I lied. I just thought some of some other questions. That's uh, perfect. So you mentioned like a lot of the data gets pushed over to follow up boss. What about the value that someone is given? Does the agent see that in like a custom field in follow up boss? So we don't push that into the custom field because it does um, update every single month and we don't want to um, kind of uh, push that information to uh, too many contacts. Um, mm -hmm. So the way to see the valuation is uh, by clicking on view report button here. It mm -hmm. will show you exactly what the client sees, but it's not going to trigger um, the view on that report. So as long as you're using this button, it will show you exactly the same um, outline, the same valuation, uh, but it's not going to count as a view uh, because we know it's uh, the agent looking at it. Um, so you're not going to skew any statistics or anything like that. Okay. What does the report look like? Do you have an example? That is a good question. Uh, let me stop sharing here for a second. Okay. While you're doing that, for those watching, another thing I'm going to put in the description is if you have any concerns now with your email deliverability, or you may run in, you may already be running into that problem. Um, I'm going to put a previous interview I did with Alex Shakov. He specializes in email deliverability um, because these emails are only as good as they get delivered. So if you're not using a paid email platform like Google Workspace, then your email deliverability is going to be a lot lower. Um, so they'll be feel, not feel free, but be sure to watch that video um, in the description as well. Alex is a genius when it comes to emails. Um, I definitely recommend talking to him if you are having issues with, um, you know, going to spam, things not being delivered. Um, it's absolutely crucial. It's interesting because we've gone through a very similar um, setup with uh, texting where things were getting blocked across the board. And it's funny that now it's also hitting email, even though email has been around forever and that's been kind of the marketing tool for a lot of people, but um, it's only kind of getting to, to that now. Um, and it's not an obvious thing. Email is actually very complicated once you start unpacking it um, and having the right uh, person kind of walk you through, make sure that it's, you don't accidentally disconnect your whole email and stop receiving emails because I've done that to myself before. Um, and it's a very uncomfortable feeling. So um, Alex is definitely the right person to guide you through that. All right. Um, so this is my follow-up boss. Um, and um, just to kind of give you an example of what, uh, what you would see uh, when you're creating one of these reports, so um, I already created one for this person. Um, there is all these kind of action buttons that uh, do different things, but uh, if you wanted to see a report, you would click on uh, the view report. And uh, this is uh, what uh, ours looks like. So it will give you the value for the house, the upper range, lower range. It will give you the historic values uh, going uh, back, I think, six years. Um, it does have a greeting, so it'll have the owner um, name uh, on the report, uh, a signature. This can be customized. Um, my card here is not doesn't have any additional data other than uh, my name and the email. This can be filled in. And the way you can uh, you can actually do that yourself by going to settings. I'm going to edit 
and you can add company name, business title, phone number. You can add your Calendly uh, mm -hmm. into here. Um, mm -hmm. I'll actually show you this right now because this is um, actually really, uh, really neat. I just need to pull up my Calendly page and grab the URL of it. Uh, so I'll grab this one. Awesome. I yeah. love that you can customize. Yeah, so we wanted to make sure that this is specifically for agents. Um, you know, uh, HomeBot is kind of designed more for lenders. This is specifically for agents. You want to be um, in control of uh, what you're sending out. Um, you and you know, this is uh, this is a seller uh, agent tool. Um, so when you have added your um, Calendly link. And you go back to the to the report and just uh, refresh this. What well, you're gonna see now you have a scheduled meeting button, mm -hmm. and as soon as you click on it, your Calendly page opens up. Um, so we want to eliminate any kind of barriers for the contact to get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. um, so you know by sending out emails directly from your follow boss email to you know adding you know buns that allow uh, clients to schedule a meeting with you um, that all just makes it so much easier to get in touch to get deal done to um, show that hey you're on the top of your game and uh, makes it super super compelling to uh, to work with you now a couple of other things uh, okay. that uh, clients can do they can add adjustments right on the fly so I can say hey um, you know I've redone my kitchen. Let's just say that you know I spent fifty thousand. I'm gonna save that. And you can see that instantly the valuation has changed. Um, so as soon as that's done, if it's done through, uh, if the client does this, uh, you'll see uh, the tag. The tag doesn't show up because I'm the agent right now and I'm doing the adjustments. So you don't want to kind of be confused with that. That's why there's no tag. But as soon as uh, there is um and client that's doing it you will be notified and you will have that information and you can use smart list to filter that you will have the system running um for you know let's say a month um you can do it more regularly but you should be checking and seeing if there are um tags and then act on them and make sure that uh, there isn't any um, opportunities uh, to engage with something that, hey, you know, you've done some renovations, uh, it seems, you know, um, are you thinking of uh, selling the home? Are you going to stay there for a while longer? Um, that's what uh, this allows you to do and really kind of uh, pick up on those uh, cues that, uh, that your leads are leaving by engaging with these reports. Mm -hmm. Last question before you show people how to learn more or sign up. Does owner console support teams? and individual consumers. Yeah, absolutely. So we've done um, a lot of work to uh, make sure that we can onboard uh, large teams uh, seamlessly so that every person doesn't have to create uh, their own accounts. Uh, we just need to know who uh, are the people that need an account uh, with uh, owner console, um, and then we can uh, bring them all in. Uh, mm -hmm. Similar to what we're doing with Texting Betty, we don't actually charge per user. Uh, we charge per overall usage. Uh, mm -hmm. So we look at um, how many reports uh, you're uh, going to need um, and then allocate certain um, uh, quota to your agents. Um, but we're not actually looking at how many, um, how many individual users uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have. That doesn't really matter to us. It's more how many reports that you're sending. So... Uh, if you have 200 people, that doesn't mean that you need 200 licenses. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that's that's perfect. Because some people will use it a lot and some people will use it a little bit. That's just the name of the game of a team. Uh, so what does where does someone go to learn more? Or I think you mentioned a free trial even. Absolutely. So the best way to actually try this out is to go to your follow a boss, go to admin page, go to all integrations, scroll all the way down, find owner console. Uh, once you have this enabled, uh, all you need to do is open any of your leads, find the owner console embedded app, and then just follow the steps. Um, it will ask you to create an account. 
It doesn't ask for um, for a credit card or anything like that. Um, at the end of the steps, I think there's probably three or two steps that you have to go through. You'll need to enter um, the API key. If you're not the owner um, of the account, uh, it might ask you for the owner API key, which you might have to ask uh, the owner for. Uh, once you're done, it's going to give you 25 reports to play around with. Um, they're absolutely free. You can use them um, as you wish. Um, and then if you do find this useful and you want to uh, get in touch and um, get this uh, set up for the broader audience, um, uh, reach out uh, to me uh, either through... Um, uh, ownerconsole.com uh, or you can send me a message directly. My email is andre at getkeys.ca uh, and that's uh, G-E-T-K-E-Y-S dot C-A. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, Andre. This was super insightful. I was very curious to learn more about the product as well. So I'm excited to hear about people's experiences with it. And I'm sure lots of people find this video helpful. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's always a pleasure uh, catching up with you and uh, showing you all the cool stuff that we're working on. Yeah. Thanks, Andre. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.